Today, I had the chance to sit down with Dan O'Neill. Now, if you don't know Dan, this guy's been in the business for four years now. He's up in Long Island. He's got a massive team, right? And so he's under 30 years old, and he's really done an incredible job here of being able to build this team out with really not being in the business that long and being super young. Um, it's really incredible what he's put together here. Last year, they did $240 million worth of sales, 400 deals. He expanded his team to Florida here lately, um, and he's just continuing to be a workaholic and really make it happen when he's supposed to. I remember back when I was in the building part of my career, um, you know, I was working 15 hours a day. That's what he's doing right now. Um, so this is a very, very good entertaining uh interview and he gets into the details of his listing presentation and i found this very interesting i know you're gonna love it smash the like button hit subscribe let me know what you think in the comments and let's get into it ladies and gentlemen make some noise for ricky Caru. So you're a 30 year vet in the business, you have a good sphere, you don't really need any of the resources. You're good at a 90 10 split somewhere, that's great. If we close a transaction, they have a weekly meeting with us, we go through every single number, it's all metrics, KPI based. Who do you think that they might, who do you think you might be getting the better leads there? You know, they'll get into the comments of like big influencers, they get thousands of comments and stuff, and they'll like see a bunch of people hating on these people that are really great people. And then by investing in your brand, I mean, that could be having a, getting some pens, right? They have your name on it. I don't know if you can see this. That could be social media. That could be thinking outside the box. Well, there's plenty of ways to get free leads. I mean, there's plenty of ways, right? For sale by owners are free. Door knocking is free. Social media are free. Sphere of influence yeah. are free. Meeting people in public are free. I mean, like you can build your entire career for free. I barely graduated high school. I only went to college for baseball and I got kicked off the team in a year. Mm -hmm. And we're making money like that. But yeah. it's everything that you put into it. And I dropped out of college and I'm literally <laughs> going to be a billionaire. <laughs> what up, dude? What's going on, brother? How are you? Good, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. Happy Labor Day. Yeah, yeah. You too, bro. You working or are you just doing this? Uh, a little bit of work and mainly just this. Yeah. I, honestly, I really haven't taken a day off, uh, like an actual day off. Uh, we never get days off, but really haven't any, taken any time to spend with family, friends. I haven't golfed in a couple months. So this weekend, you know, is typically a little bit slow. So working on a lot of the back end stuff. We, we brought on a ton of agents the last couple of months. So just working on staffing, interviews, SOPs, everything. So it was nice to kind of get a few days by a few days of probably like 24 hours of, uh, <laughs> you know, spending time with my family, seeing everybody and, you know. Yeah, so you're just like grinding. You're like in the building stages. Like I remember when I was like in that stage where like I literally worked 15 hours a day, and never took a vacation. That's kind yeah. of like where you are. It, it, but it, but it's weird because if, right. So I, I look at it almost like a chart, right? So I went through like the building phase, right? Then I hit a number, and now I kind of like I'm back to the building phase because I'm building something bigger. You know, like bringing on new agents, uh, you know, adding to the team. We have Florida. So in, in many ways, like I am back to that, that you know, kind of building stage. And, yeah. and it's funny too, like it, on, on that chart, it should be like, you know, like uh, revenue wise, right? Like it's like, you know, revenue is good. Revenue is great, 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 great. But it's like now I'm reinvesting everything at this bottom level again because mm. I feel that last June or July, whether everyone wants to admit we were in a recession or not, mm. the writing was on the wall. So fortunately, I kind of had a little bit of a head start, right? I'm not just watching the news and everything. I knew what was going on through stats and facts. And so that's when I was like, you know what? Six months from now, 12 months from now, a lot of people, unfortunately, and I, and I hope that it you know, changes. And that's what I'm trying to do. But a lot of people are not going to be in a good spot because they don't know how to follow up. They don't know how to cold call. They don't know those 15-hour days, right? They, they don't know how to get- what you were saying last year, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. It, like June, July, right? When when I, I started to kind of figure out that we were in a recession or whatever they wanted to call it, right? Yeah. Um, not getting like like the definition of recession has changed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you know. it's kind of been since then, but it, I really amped it up. I would say 
it was because of a, a bet I had with Lisa Chinati like two and a half months ago. And a bet? A bet. A public accountability bet. Okay. What was the bet? I knew I was going to lose it from, from the second that I did it, but I'm a very competitive person. That's why I can't really golf right now because, you know, it drives me nuts. But the bet was basically – we were, we were both sitting in the car. She was friendly enough to come down to Long Island to talk to my team. And she was talking to me about, you know, what, what are my issues and what were hers? Hers was she's not utilizing social media the same way that you and I are. And mine were that my p and was getting a little bit skewed because I'm very fortunate, knock on wood, to have had the same, you know, 30 agents with me for four years now, right? But as they continue to do business, uh, they get higher splits. So the, the okay. company dollar goes down. So she's uh -huh. like, well, why don't you do any outbound recruiting? I'm like, well, because I don't have the staff. I don't have the support. I don't have the help. She's like, well, let's make a bet, recruiting bet. Whoever can recruit the most agents from now until, you know, August 15th wins. And then let's do a side bet. What's your other problem? And I'm like, well, our Zillow numbers aren't that great. We have uh, Zillow Flex. Mm -hmm. So we weren't picking up the phone the right amount. We weren't setting appointments, all of the above. So mm -hmm. I won the Zillow bet, and we're now we went from uh, 42 out of 42 in the metro, which is New Jersey, Manhattan, Connecticut, New York, or Long Island, to number one, which is pretty sick. In two and a half months, three number months, number one what? Uh, just a conversion rate. So we have a 99 percent answer rate. We have uh, you know the highest appointment rate, the highest conversion rate, all of the above. Out of, out of the Zillow Flex agents, you mean? Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but those are the best 42 teams, you know, in the in the metro. So. We, huh. we fixed that and won that, but I knew I was going to lose the recruiting bet. Lisa has 90 agents. She had the SOPs. She has the staff. She's a C, you know, all those things. I was basically sitting there with two sticks of fire, like a caveman. But what it did was I knew I was going to lose it, but it allowed me to get out of my comfort zone and bring on those agents, realize that I can help those agents and staff up. And I'm just, I'm just fired up. So, so are yeah, you bringing on like new agents? experienced agents like do they have to have a certain kind of resume to join the mm. team or what's the what's the mo here yeah so i i never thought that i could actually recruit um anybody that was like doing business business right because if you're doing 37 deals you know why would you want to join a team but again mm -hmm. back to my original point i kind of realized that these companies or at least around here um and no offense to them they don't really offer a ton so if you're a you're 30 year vet in the business you have a good sphere you don't really need any of the resources. You're good at a 90-10 split somewhere. That's great. But for the people that, you know, I had a success for three years, four years, and they don't have any video, they don't have any any leads, they don't have any uh, ISAs, they don't have any, they don't have a cold call. The, these uh, agents would come to me. They're like, yeah, we have a $3,000 a month marketing budget. I'm like, really? Well, what are you doing with that $3,000? And they would, basically what they were telling me is they're throwing it on the street. So that's great. You have a $3,000 marketing budget, but they're not teaching you how to market. They're not teaching you what to do with that money. So mm -hmm. now there is a minimum requirement of like five to 12 deals. And I'm figuring out that I can get people that are doing 40 deals because if they're doing 40 with no resources, it's very easy for them to do 80 to 100 to 120 mm -hmm. with the resources. And back to like what you told me four years ago, three years ago, you don't want the $250,000 agent. You want the million dollar agent. So what are the resources that you're giving them that they don't we're, have? Where are we recording, are? by the way? Yeah, we're rolling, oh, bro. Oh, okay, I thought, I thought we were just shooting the shit. <laughs> no, see, 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 that's how I like to do it, bro. Because, yeah, because like, when, 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 and like, I catch everybody off guard. Yeah. I'm like, I just start rolling. And then, and then it's like the realest talk is before yeah. the podcast starts. And I, you know, like two, three podcasts ago, I was like, dude, I'm going to record from the moment they click on and then act like we're not recording yeah. and then be like, Hey guys, we're recording. We're Dan O'Neill. Yeah. Everyone <laughs> gets awkward. Like, well, everything you just said was like the juiciest part, like part of the juiciest of the whole show. You know what I mean? Well, so wait. congratulations. <laughs> but it's so funny. But once you say like the, Hey everybody, we have Dan O'Neill, you know, blah, 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 blah. You read it off and then you go three, two, one. We both sit here like. <laughs> you know, like well, the, thing, the thing is, man, is like, like the experience I'm trying to create with my show is like, it's a natural conversation. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just a real conversation. Like I don't, I, I don't have any like yeah. questions prepared. I know nothing about your business. That's how I roll. I just talk, you know, like oh, I'm boy. digging and trying to like pick your brain around, you know, what's mm -hmm. going on in your world. Like I, I've, I've had some incredible guests so far. Yeah. 
And uh, well, well, that's why I respect you so much too. Like, you know, we had the, the BAM quote unquote, like debate. You and I have, you know, hopped on podcasts many times before. And, and it's funny, like each and every single time we're both kind of in like a different, we're in like a different position, right? And, and these are just throughout, throughout the years. I mean, this has only been four years for me, really. But every time I see you or I sit down with you, it's kind of like we're both in in different positions than we were the last time we had spoken. Mm-hmm. Like I see now that you're on social and you're you're doing your own business. And I love the content that you're, you're posting. Like I, I genuinely laugh out loud like the, mm-hmm. it's such a good catch, you know? And it's just funny how over time, you know, things change. Um, I forgot the, the question, damn it. Uh, oh, the resources. So resources being CRM, accountability, yeah. team meetings, office space. We have a full-time content team of five people. We yeah. have uh, full training. We have coaching, paid for mm-hmm. coaching. I don't get any trouble here. Uh, Who's the coach? What I coach have, uh, is it? It's Jeff Mays through the uh, Tom Ferry ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Um, Jeff has done wonders for my business in terms of you know making me um, – holding myself accountable, but also now being able to hold my team accountable. Yeah. Um, we have the Zillow flex leads, which are some of the best in, in the, in the area. We and have that, uh, the Zillow flex is like, you get the lead for free and then you pay Zillow or referral on the back end. Correct. Yeah. Um, but so what, what happens is, and why, in my opinion, the leads are far better. If you are my, my neighbor, right. And you're tied into a zip code that has market-based pricing, which I believe is going to be going away pretty soon. And they have you for six, let's say six months, 10 grand a month, no matter what, Mm -hmm. right? We're in that same zip code, but we pay Zillow for 35% or 30, 25, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. If we close the transaction, they have a Mm -hmm. weekly meeting with us. We go through every single number. It's all metrics, KPI based. Mm -hmm. Who do you think that they might, who think might be getting the better leads there? Right. So we're closing leads at about a 20% ratio right now, which is, Really good, especially for a niche market like Long Island. Um, mm-hmm. And it's mm-hmm. interesting, too, to see what Zillow's doing with the 1% down payment loan and what they're doing in other markets like Raleigh, Charlotte, uh, Durham, Atlanta. They're, they got rid of market-based pricing. It's strictly mm-hmm. flex. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Well, I know they were testing that out in, that, in certain yeah. markets, and their goal was to just see – if that worked and then eventually if it did if it worked better than the just buy pay for people's contact information then they would kind of start to you know lean towards that i think that i think that day is coming and and that's why like i saw my numbers and and they're getting rid of teams on flex like they're right if you're not performing if you're not hitting these numbers we're going to give these leads to somebody else yeah yeah Right, so we, right. we brought on an ISA and, and we really hit it hard. And I mean, to go from literally like we almost got kicked out to if I show a screen share my numbers right now, you'd be like, what the hell did you guys do last two months? And it's because yeah. I'm sitting here, right, for 15 hours a day. And uh, it's because of our staff, too. We have an incredible staff. So, so what do you so what are all your lead gen avenues? There's there's Zillow Flex. There's, mm-hmm. I guess, organic traffic, you know, from social. Mm-hmm. Um you know, referrals, past clients, stuff like that. Yep. So we, what, we have, what all your lead gen acti- uh, avenues? So th- those are four that you just named. Um, a lot, lot of it is direct mail campaigns, direct to sellers. A lot of it is um, circle dialing, prospecting. Our team is mm. absolutely in one when it comes to door knocking and cold calling. And uh, it's nice because we have so much inventory that we create in, mm-hmm. in, a, t- in a time of, <clears throat> excuse me, in a time where there is no inventory. So mm-hmm. anytime we put out a listing, that's 200 doors that you can go knock. That's 200, you know, calls you can make. Yeah. All the above. And so every single, we put out probably seven or eight listings a week. Those are all opportunities right there. So mm-hmm. instead of teaching everybody to be an, an indoor cat and just pick up the phone when the Zillow phone rings, mm-hmm. we teach them how to be outdoor cats and the Zillow and the social media and all those things are supposed to be supplemental. Mm-hmm. So it, it's, I mean, even our office space too is is a, is a source of leads because of its location. Mm. Uh, you have people we, walk in. You have buyers and sellers walk into the office. They, they peek in. Yeah, I, I wouldn't wow. say it's like I wouldn't it's say it's old like, Yeah, but it's just the, we have a pickleball court. We have a podcast studio in there. We have it's a it's a very nice structure. And and even the uh, one that we yeah. have now in Sarasota that's going to be opening up. It's right on Main Street. So, so this is like it. your building. Like you you bought or rent this building, or is it your your no, brokerages? It's, it's, our brokerages, yeah. So they, so, so, but is it just your team in there? Or is it the whole company? 
it's it's like their headquarters. So they have, a, I think, 20 offices on Long Island. Um, oh. And the building that we're in has the owners. It's upper ma- management. Got you. Got CEOs. You. Um, I think we are the only team in, yeah, in that office. Do you love being a team leader? Like you, you, yes. you know, you, you know, you were like, uh, you know, obviously like you, you were a single agent for a while and then you started mm-hmm. to try to build the team and now you've got this super successful team. Do you love that role? Cause it's totally different than being like a real estate agent. I think my life would be a lot easier, a lot simpler if, uh, if I were by myself and if I just had maybe a buyer's agent and admin, mm-hmm. but I can't tell you how much joy it brings me like truly, um, mm-hmm. you know, bringing people on and, and seeing their success. Uh, mm-hmm. at the same time, I can't put my head on the pillow at night if they're not doing well, right? Yeah. Like that crushes yeah. me, yeah. but we have so many success stories in the last, I mean, even just four months alone, you know, from this recruiting stuff. Yeah. I, I had a 23 year old, uh, shout out to Schladen. He, uh, you know, had a little bit of a speech impediment. I'm not a resource teacher. I, you know, like, or sort of therapy, speech therapy coach, nothing. All we did was we role played with him every single day. We mm-hmm. gave him confidence. We told them, you know, hey, listen, open house starts at 12. You come with me. We start our open houses at 9 a.m. So I told them to come to the office. We printed out 200 mailers, 200 flyers. I'm like, all right, we're going to door knock. We're going to cold call. We're going to get leads to the listing. And he, he didn't know any different, right? He, he thought that that's how, he, that's how we do open houses, which you should. Mm. But I haven't done that in many, many years. So yeah, he, he believes that. I hope he doesn't see this. And he's doing it every weekend. And he's doing it times four. And he... Has again gotten so many deals and so much confidence in those couple of months that yeah you talk to him now he's slinging it you you won't yeah. even hear an uh out of him nothing right right we have somebody these two um they're actually married the Jens one of them worked in the OR she worked in uh she was a, a medical sales device she made three fifty a year three fifty yeah that's that's serious coin right that's but she was so sick of you know having to go to the OR and the and the the rush of it and she's helping the doctors and she just she didn't want to do it anymore. So mm-hmm. she joins the team and in one month she's able to make a hundred grand in GCI. Her mm-hmm. partner, her wife, is a former, I believe, uh Marine or or Army. I'm so sorry that I'm getting this wrong, but she's a veteran. So we mm-hmm. call her GI Jen. Okay. So she now worked at the VA, you know, just front desk clerk kind of thing. Mm-hmm. She gets so excited, she gets up and quits her job. The both of them have already done, I want to say, since May, probably nine, nine to eleven transactions. I've made mm. north of one hundred thousand dollars in GCI each. So, yeah. like that to me is just, I almost got choked up, you know. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we it, it's it's cool to to like hear you say that because you know that that's what I do, you know. Um, I your life would be much easier, right? If you were if you were by yourself, your life would be much easier in a way. But you can only go so far by yourself, and I, and I think having the right people around you is the most important thing. Well, what I was going to say is that we did it in different ways. You know, um, like I tried to do a team in 2012 and I had about 12 agents over the course of like a year and a half. And I was like, screw this. Right. (laughs) And like it was taken away from my business and these agents were coming to learn everything and leaving. And I didn't understand like, like how to set expectations, like, right. uh, All that stuff. Like I could build if I. I could build a massive team now, but okay, but it's a lot of work, you know, way more work than I want to do. I think most agents get into wanting to do a team so they can step out of production. Mm -hmm. And so they build a team and then just step out of production and then the team just falls apart. It's like Mm -hmm. you have to stay in there with the team for years and years and years before you get it to a place where you can kind of start to take some time off. And um, I was like, I'm just going to crush it as a single agent because my goal really was to make a million bucks a year at that point. I still wasn't there yet. And then I was like, I'll go make a mill a year, just me and my assistant, and then I'll just keep all the money. And then I'll figure out a different way to like, uh, you know, impact the world or whatever. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And so now I do it through, you know, the free coaching and the content and all the yep. stuff that I do. And like thousands of, you know, crazy success stories and all that stuff. It's the and, best feeling um, in the world. And, and and you're doing it for, for free. But it, but yeah. like I, even in your comments, like people that I speak to that that you've helped, like that that really for me is like the biggest joy of it is being able to. And people don't know that about you, right? Like unless they really have a relationship with you or they really get to know you, they, they think you're just you're doing it for some other cause, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's very easy to judge somebody or, or. 
or make, you know, a perception of somebody because you don't know them or maybe even you're jealous of them. Right. So unless you really get to sit down and, and know you, people think you're trying to do it to make money. You're trying to recruit. Nah, yeah. Just trying to help people, man. Uh, you know, I mean, the bigger you get, the more haters you have. I've really come to learn that over the last year or so. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Cheers. And it's crazy. Like the comments, like it's, it's, it's like, do what? Like it, it, it takes me back to like high school days, you know, when I used to throw, throw knuckles at people over like stupid stuff. I'm like, man, this is like, you guys going to bring the old Rick back. <laughs> but uh, you, what, what I've realized, cause I, I get it a lot too. And, and I mean, I even get it like relationship wise, stuff like that. Right. Where people are just trying to, you know, prod at me or, or maybe take me off my game. What I've realized though, is that working and doing everything with the right intentions and, and coming mm. from, you know, the right place in your heart, I, I can go to sleep knowing that. So if somebody out there right now is talking about me or the comment or whatever they might be doing, that's fine because I know that they don't actually know me. And not everybody, just, not everybody has a thick skin though. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's easy. what's, that's what sucks about social media yeah. is that there's always going to be those trolls and you know, a lot of people, you know, they'll get into the comments of like big influencers that get thousands of comments and stuff. And they'll like see a bunch of people hating on these people that are really great people, you know, and then they're like, shit, I don't want that. I'm not even going to try to post stuff. I'm not even going to try to become a content creator or build a brand or anything like that, because there's no way I could deal with, you know, 470 hate, like, <laughs> like hate. Man, yeah. comments, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that's the downside of the whole thing. You got to have a really thick skin, but well, I mean, um, and, and someone that's a, you know, producer, like a content producer, like yourself, I think the biggest change for me in, in, in my content, right. I used to make those silly, funny videos and I still, you know, do every now and then, but that's what got me to where I, you know, I am today and that's what helped build my following. But mm. I kind of realized, you know, over the last year I was making content that like I wouldn't post stuff because I, I didn't think it would get likes or comments, right. Or it wasn't good enough. Like, how do I outdo myself every single time? Mm -hmm. And the second that I just kind of like, I don't care anymore. You know, like, I don't care yeah. what people think. I don't care if I get likes, comments. The second mm -hmm. that I like kind of had that, that, that shift in my mindset, my content has done a complete 360. I am getting the, the engagement. You know, I'm getting a lot more people that are reaching out to me like, hey, love this story. And the second that I did, it was just so much more freeing, mm -hmm. um, truthfully. Because I, yeah. I would delete Instagram right now if I could. I, I can't stand it. Yeah. Wow. Truthfully. And you just do it because of business. It's like a job at this point. It's not even fun. It's in a way it is, it is fun. It's my outlet, but it, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a consumption of other content. Right. So if you get yeah. stuck caught, you know, on Instagram for, you know, and you're just scrolling for an hour, it's mm -hmm. a waste of an hour. I could have been out yeah. cold calling. I could have been door knocking. I could have been prospecting, calling. I hate, I hate that by the way, I'll get, I'll get stuck and I don't get stuck for an hour. I'll get stuck for like five minutes and I'm like, <laughs> shit. <laughs> You know, there goes five minutes, you know what I mean? And I didn't learn anything, you know. That's that's a lot of minutes, right? It, it is. Really break it down for, for you. It life. is. And so I hate I hate getting into that. Or I'll see, I'll see a video or I'll see something that I'm interested in on like Twitter, let's say, right? Like, you know, whatever that may be, sports or or otherwise or UAPs. And I, I just wasted 10 minutes, 20 minutes. And I'm like, damn it, dude, what am I, what am I doing? So mm -hmm. I, I just hate the consumption of social media. I hate what social media has become in many ways. Um, you know, I, I, am not a hater by any means, but I, I just don't want to see people spreading misinformation, mm. right? Oh, here's why the housing market is going to crash in a year. Mm. Here's, here's why teams suck or here's why, yeah. Zillow, you know, all these things. And I want to comment on it and be like, Hey, like, let's talk about this. Cause I don't, you know, think you're spreading the correct information, but mm. that, again, it's a waste of time. So, well, I mean, you'd have to comment on like a million people's different <laughs> posts. You know what I mean? And, and it's not it's not only social media, it's 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 uh, mainstream media articles and New York Times and all of them. Right. All of them um, are playing on everybody's fears to get more clicks. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I mean, you, you could I you mean, it's you need like a whole like army of people to comment uh, and combat all the, you know, because a lot of it is opinion based. Right. All of it is opinion based. It's all like, here's mm -hmm. what's going to happen. Well, nobody knows what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's crazy because 
these guys that say prices are going to go down 30, 40 percent or whatever. They've been saying it for like two, three, four years and really longer yeah. than that. Right. Really <laughs> yeah. a lot longer than that. But let's just say since the pandemic, you know, yeah. they're like prices are going to go down like 30, 40 percent. They're still saying it. They come up with a new reason every month or yeah. two. Right. And um, it's like, dude, you've been wrong for two years now. Like you said, it was going to go down 30 percent last year. Now you said it was going to go down 30, 40 percent this year. Now you're saying it's going to go down and it's, the prices still continue to go up. Right. <laughs> You've been wrong time after time after time again. But you still get 100,000, 200,000, 300, 400, 500,000 views per mm-hmm. video saying the same story with a different, uh, yeah. you know, a different reason. reason. Yep. Right. And it always it always doesn't happen. But yeah, people <laughs> still watch your stuff. It blows my mind. And then here I am, you know, since the pandemic, I've been dead on the money when it comes mm-hmm. to prices. Right. The one thing I got wrong was I figured mortgage rates would be a little lower right now. Mm-hmm. At, like at this point, I thought mortgage rates were, would be a little closer to, you know, under six or something like that. And so yeah. I got that one wrong. But like as far as prices go and transactions and all that, I've been on the money the whole time. And these mm-hmm. guys will argue with me. And I'm like, your track record is horrible. You don't have a good track record, man. You know, and it's like I've I've hit this on the money every mm-hmm. time, you know. It's and what like, and, and you take accountability for it, right? Like you just said, you you were wrong. You thought rates again, none of us know that that's really the thing. Mm-hmm. All we can do is we we can follow the numbers. We we can use facts and data, right? Objective data instead of feelings. And, and to te- to tie to what you're saying, my mom's been watching my puppy a lot lately, right? So she's someone that watches the news every day. She watches the news. She doesn't have Twitter. She doesn't have Instagram. All she knows is the news. TV. It's TV. Mm-hmm. My mom, if I go to Manhattan, she tells me to be careful because I'm gonna get <laughs> I'm gonna get killed. I'm uh-huh. like, you know, don't go on a plane. I'm like, mom you know, the housing market's going to crash. Is everything okay? Mom, what are you, where are you getting this info? Like, yeah. And it's in a way it's almost helped me become a better agent because like you have to start off with, okay, I understand you, why you may feel that way because you've been watching you know, this news channel every day, this incredibly biased news channel. They can't even get the weather right, let alone the housing market. They don't know what, you know, what we're dealing with. They're not in the trenches. They're not dealing with buyers and sellers and, and, you know, follow-up clients. And it, it's our job to educate to the best of our knowledge, at least, right? And coming from a place of, of you know, I don't know what the right word here is, but uh, coming from a place where we're trying to help people, right? Yeah. We're not here trying to get clicks or, or scamming people or, or you know, saying the housing market's going to crash or it's not going to crash or saying That's it's the worst to one, right? It's like, oh, sure, you're a real estate agent. Of course, you're going to say the market's great. It's a good time to buy. Prices are going to go up. You know, it's right. it's insane. It's like, bro, do you realize that I could give a shit less if you buy something or not, or if anyone buys anything. I mean, if you knew how little I cared about if people are going to buy or sell, I don't have to worry about that because closings happen every single day. We're literally, the truth is we're at 2008 levels in terms of number of transactions. Yeah. Right. We're like 4 million transactions this year is what we're on track to do, man. That's 2008 levels. We're like in the crash right now. That is, that is, I think, what, histor- or maybe the second lowest, I think, or the lowest record of inventory I think we've had in 22 years. And on top of that, too, we're now heading into at least my slow season, right, at the end of uh, yeah. the summertime, right? It gets slow right. here in the Northeast. But there's also $97 billion in commission. That's, that's more commission, Ricky, than there was in 2019. Yeah. Keep that in mind, right? So yeah. there are going to be less transactions for sure because there's no low, low inventory and high rates, but there is still so much opportunity for everybody out there. And the same way that you just said, I could give a shit, right? I'm not put, putting out these videos to convince you to buy your home or not. If you don't think buying a house is historically the best investment that you can make, and I'm not going to convince you, but you know what I'm going to do? While you sit back and not buy a house and you just keep your money in, in, a, in a CD or stock market, wherever it may be, I'm going to go up and buy houses because this is the time that makes people wealthy. This mm. this is the time to do that. And that's in a year from now, let's hop on a podcast because I'll be there. I will either be working at Chick-fil-A. There's nothing wrong with that, but at least I'll have Sundays off. Or I'm going to be doing 3,000 sides a year and I'll be on that news channel telling everybody that they're all idiots. <laughs> Dude, I was watching the Bama game and there was, there was 500 commercials 
for the Chick-fil-A new honey. <laughs> what was it? It was the honey pepper pimento. Okay. <laughs> right. I'm talking 500, like I over mean, and over. And I love pimento, bro. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, we are going to get this sandwich, man. <laughs> And my mom, I was with my mom and uh, and my wife. And they're like, oh, you're going to love that because they knew I love pimento and jalapenos yeah. at the bottom. They just started seeing this commercial over and over and over again. I was like, we are going tomorrow. I'm going to eat one of them sandwiches. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's like they're closed on Sundays. Listen, but look, they're, they're not they're not they're not backing down. Right. There, there are companies that you'll see. And, and I relate this to COVID in 2019 or whatever it was, March or February. I couldn't get into a lot of the, the market-based pricing Zillow, you know, counts in, in my local market because these senior teams and senior agents had them. I would refresh Zillow every like 10 minutes when we were, we were on lockdown. So you couldn't even go outside the house, nothing. I would refresh it every 10 minutes and I was waiting for them to pull out their money because I knew that they were gonna. I was watching that. I was actually watching the news and they did. And I dumped everything into it. Like, I, I mean, I even personally, like I, I almost didn't make my rent. And this is after right. I was already doing you, a lot of business. You, to buy Zillow leads, you mean? Yeah, to get into the mar- like the really, really good markets, market-based pricing. How and much again, did you, what do you mean? How much did you put in? So the equivalent of what I have right now would be almost $75,000 a month in mm-hmm. Zillow Flex, right? If I had market-based pricing. But at that time, and this is when I was doing, that was my, uh, my year and a half into the business. So my team was fairly new. I probably put in, we had uh, Smithtown, St. James. I probably... In 10 minutes, I probably put in like $35,000 mm. just like that because I knew that there would not be another chance to grab the num- like the number one in all of those zips. And then we started, I took the 35, I put it in the Zillow. Let's say I had a hundred grand saved up at the time. Mm. And I took probably 40 and we went to all the restaurants that were, that needed help and we bought food and mm. because we were younger and we kind of hoped that, you know, listen, if we get sick, whatever. But there were so many people in need. Me, my team, and I—we went to all the local hospitals, VAs, and it was scary as shit. I'm not gonna lie; it was like zombie land. We you know, like hazmat masks, and we went and we donated to these restaurants. We got the food, and then we brought it to all the workers, to all the nurses, to all the people that mm-hmm. were in the hospitals, and we made everybody's day. And that seventy-five thousand dollars that I invested between Zillow and and philanthropy—that mm-hmm. I think. It, you know, 99% of the reason why we're here today. But mm. if I didn't do that, I just kind of sat home and I and I was just, oh, oh, we can't go outside. So let's just, I don't know, let's, let me play Xbox today or, you know, let me let me watch TV. I wouldn't be here. So I think that this is another time like that. Well, anybody that sits around and plays Xbox and, you know, hangs out at their house is not going to do anything. <laughs> I mean, but yeah, but how many excuses could you make right now? Right, All, a lot of people are, are in a bad way because they weren't they were in bad habits. They didn't follow up. They yeah. didn't use the CRM right. They had no CRM integrity. Mm. They they didn't work on their pipeline. They, they weren't doing Popeyes. Mm. They weren't mm. sending out email lists. They weren't making mm. social media. The mm. list could go on. Mm. But it was because it was easy. In yeah. the last couple of years, I like easy because it's like deals fall on your lap, and so you kind of grew accustomed to just how easy things were and. You weren't even thinking about, oh, this is going to end and Zillow leads are going to dry up and I need to build a database. So that's how I was in 2000, like four and five. um, The market blew up like 2021 and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't do any. I just like I would make 10 calls and find somebody that wanted to make 200 grand that day. And they're like, yeah, out of 10 people, somebody was like, yeah, I list it, sell it in 24 hours, close on it in a month. And then mm-hmm. I'd call 10 people, do another deal. And like, I forgot about them. They forgot about me. Yeah. I didn't care. I was just make 10 more calls and make 20 grand, make 10 more calls, make 20 grand. Yeah. And then when the market crashed, I was screwed. Yeah. Same thing with, I think a lot of these agents uh, now is they were too dependent on the market and whatever, whoever was giving them leads or whatever the case may be, they didn't know how to go out there and create leads out of thin air, which is really a skill. You know what I mean? Yep. Did you, do you ever do you ever think instead of spending like you know hundreds of thousands on Zillow or giving thirty five percent referrals and stuff like that, just call property owners and do deals and not pay anybody anything? Absolutely, but because we have so many people and it's such a good opportunity that the, Z- the Zillow stuff is not meant to be your main source of income. If, yeah. if you're relying on that, then you're done. We off the team in yeah, 30 days, right? So we're teaching them how to be outdoor cats 
And those are just supposed to be supplemental. And, and it's almost like a reward system because between that and open houses, those are people that are calling you, say, raising their hand, saying, hey, I'm interested in buying a house. So mm. that's more supplemental. But everybody's out there door knocking, scooters, they're cold calling, they're doing all those things. There are 1.5 million agents right now in this business. Mm -hmm. That number, should it should be probably 10% of that. And I think in the next six months, they're probably- 10%, 150,000 agents? In my, yeah, in my opinion, I think so. I, truthfully, I think in the next six months, there's gonna, there will be at least half. Because how many people won't be able to pay their you know MLS or their association or their NAR dues, <clears throat> right? And how many people, Austin, Texas, for example, right now, in their, uh, it's called ABOR, they have 15,000 members. Take a guess on how many of them have sold three homes or less out of okay, a 100. So 1,500, 15,000? 15,000. Out of 15,000, 15, 15, how many have sold three homes? Hold on a second. Let me do the math. Yeah, let me do the math. Let me think. 15,000, let's see, 10% would be 1,500. Austin, Texas is one of the hottest markets. Everybody from LA was going yeah. there. 100% I'm going to pay... 900 well no um nine thousand sixty nine, sixty seven sixty seven so half the agents did three deals or more oh i'm sorry no no I, you're right it was 67 percent of agents have done less than three deals 67 percent of agents have done less than three deals oh, oh, oh okay okay so so 34 percent or whatever yes did three deals or more so 33 percent. that's going to be Five thousand. That's a lot, dude. The year before that, in two thousand twenty-one or whatever, um, there was a stat going around that out of the one point five million agents in the U.S., eight only eight percent, eight yep. did four or more deals uh, the first half of the year. I mean, yep. you're telling me like a third of the agents in wherever you're talking about did well, three deals or more. That's a that's a lot. No, no, no. 30% have done three deals or more. That's what I'm We're, saying. Yeah, that's yeah, a right. Lot. But that's also in the, in, and then if you go to even further, how many of them did six transactions? Now it goes down to like 3%. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Can't make a, you can't survive. You can't make a living off of, off of those I numbers. I understand. I understand. Well, supposedly we've lost like 100,000 agents this year already, right? But see, what, what, I, what, I'm, what I would love to see is the churn rate, yeah. right? Like that's net numbers. You know, we're right. like 60 to 100,000 net, right? But how many have joined mm -hmm. and then how many total have quit the business, right? right. That, that, that's what would be interesting to me. I, I don't have access. To, I haven't seen that data. Yeah. And um, how, many, how many agents also only have their license for maybe they flip or, or they you know, do interior design or maybe they just have their license for referrals. You know, that's a whole nother story. But I mean, in a, in a market like Austin, Texas, man, where... 100% appreciation year over year. Everybody's flocking there from, from California and everywhere. You'd think that'd be pretty easy to sell a house there, but people just aren't in the right habits or they don't have the right resources. And again, to, I made it a point in the very beginning. Somebody's getting a $4,000 marketing budget, but you, you, they don't know what to do with the money. Yeah. So, it's like, what do you, what do you do with it? What do you, what would you tell them? What, or what's the best use of that money? I mean, it's case by case, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what might be the best for, for you might be it's completely different for me. Yeah. I, I think I think investing in yourself is is you know and your brand or whatever. How do you whatever. how do you invest in yourself and your brand? I think you invest in yourself by education, right? So whether that be going to some conferences or or getting free coaching or paid coaching, but or getting a mentor, right? Paying for a mentor, um, joining a team, you know, taking it off the chin a little bit, maybe taking a lower split to learn from somebody that can get you the leads and all those things. And then by investing in your brand, I mean, that could be having a, getting some pens, right? They have your name on it. I don't know if you can see this. That could be social media. That could be thinking outside the box. I didn't, I didn't have a marketing budget when I first got started. I, in fact, I, I was net negative. I, I had, I was two months late on my rent. I, I told my, my parents, my listen, give me one, one month if I don't, if I don't get something this month, I'm, I'm out. I'll go back to, you know, being in the restaurant business and we'll figure this out. But I gave myself the three month. I had no money, I had nothing. So I just got creative. I need, mm -hmm. I didn't need a marketing budget. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't need it. Mm -hmm. I found a way to go out and be an outdoor cat and hunt. I had nothing handed to me, no Zillow leads, no social media, nothing. Yeah. I didn't even have an admin. 
I, I would go to a, re- I told you the story. I would go to a restaurant with my club soda and <clears throat> just meet people. I would do five open houses a weekend, but it was because the only way you can fail is if you let yourself fail. And it just wasn't happening. Well, there's plenty of ways to get free leads. I mean, there's plenty of ways, right? For sale by owners are free. Door knocking is free. Social media is for free. Sphere of influence yes. is free. Meeting people in public are free. I mean, like you can build your entire career for free. Com- entire that. career for free, like without spending a single dollar if you yeah. wanted to, right? I've never actually even taken a Zillow lead. I've had Zillow for four and a half years, or four years. I've never even taken a Zillow lead. Everything that I've ever done has always been through meeting people, connections, right? Just being personable and just getting out there. Mm-hmm. I cannot stand, well, you know, that's not true. I shouldn't say that. What bugs the crap out of me <clears throat> is when an agent says, Dan, I don't know what to do today. I don't know what to do. It just comes from a place of just not knowing, right? Like that's where the experience comes in. They don't realize that it's right under their nose, mm-hmm. you know, and they need, they need someone to say it's right there. Yeah. You know, it's right there. A lot of people are scared too. They just, they're scared to call. It's like this whole business is predicated on talking to people you don't know to help them buy and sell real estate. Mm-hmm. It's like, you don't want to do the the one thing that this business is totally predicated on. Like you've got your license. You know? It's it's so true, but that that's why it's infuriating. It's like you know you got to get on social media to you know to build your brand and and to articulate to your clients your sphere. And and if you're worried about what you look like, look at me. I have a gash on my on my face. I don't even know what the hell this is. I'll be on social media. I'm on the podcast, right? I'll be out door door knocking and talking to people. It almost and, looks like a teardrop tattoo. It does, yeah. I I uh, was jet skiing and I smashed my face against the. Damn, dude, that's why I don't do that kind of stuff. <laughs> Neither <laughs> do I. Clear example. <laughs> Fran- franchise injury. Dan O'Neill wipes out on jet ski, smashes his face. As I used to. I used to. I used to snowboard, uh, kite surf, uh, like do MMA. Uh, mm-hmm. Like I did all, I've done all kinds of stuff, um, roofing, football, like worked on an oil rig, like all kinds of dangerous physical stuff, but I won't do it in T more. <laughs> it's a franchise move. What, what are you, cause this is really the only time we get to talk. What, what are you kind of focusing on now for the next, you know, six months, year, two years? Cause again, yeah. every time we talk, we're, we're in different, you know, I'm back to this. I was, you know, growth mode, revenue mode. Yeah. Honestly, like right now, I stepped out of production last year and I'm just focused totally on the brand and then whatever businesses, you know, spawn out of that. And right now, my my real like main focus is to buy a property a month for five years, right? Just a local rental property, a house, right? I'm buying a, a new office. I'm closing on Thursday. We I have this huge office and only have one employee, right? <laughs> I, like, I see that. I see that on, on your stories. Yeah. <laughs> she, she's there. Right. Yeah. And like no agents are there. I have 40 agents locally and none of them come to the office. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get a smaller office for her. I can rent that building out for four or 5,000 a month. I own it all free and clear and paying cash for the new and own that one free and clear. Wow. I'm just going to rent that. Right. I've got, I'm closing on two new constructions. I'm 1031 and out of a condo into two brand new DR Horton homes. Then I'm getting a, uh, a little fixer upper that me and my partners are flipping. Mm-hmm. and like i'm just gonna buy them out of it like w- i flip with two other guys yeah. we do we buy on the courthouse steps foreclosures and like i wish we would have kept like or i wish i would have kept like my favorite 30 prop we've done like 100 plus properties but like the top 30 ones were like mm-hmm. really prime prime properties and i'm like shit we would be so rich right now if we would have just kept those properties you know yeah so like if we get something that's kind of in my portfolio criteria then I'm going to just buy the other two guys out and keep it, you know, as a rental. Yeah. But I'm trying to buy one property a month. And I did the numbers. If I buy a property a month for five years, I'll have about a hundred properties. Yeah. About 40 now. So if they average 500,000 per, it's 50 mil worth of property. Mm -hmm. And then I take 20 years to pay it off. It, you know, it more than doubles within the 20 years. Now I got a hundred, 150 million worth of property paid off. Uh-huh. that's just like something I can do no problem for fun, right? Just on the side. It's so, generational. And now you're setting yeah, up your, your children, you're, you're done for everything for, you know, to, to have success when they're, you know, when they grow up, that that's think about what you just said, right? Everybody is 
take pulling out and and they're they're scared and they're the market's gonna crash this that the other whatever it may be and you are buying a house a month i am i just invested in and bought you know got an office down in florida and i'm looking for property every day think about that two yeah. people here that have like you sold way more real estate than i have but that have sold quite a bit of real estate are buying real estate now I yeah i mean know. look if it's cash flowing like the thing the thing that i look at right now is like if it if i can make it cash flow with today's interest rates mm -hmm. it's like what what like run that scenario past me well here's how it goes right now i'm making x amount of cash flow right okay later on as rents increase incrementally mm -hmm. and the mortgage rate decreases when i refinance and maybe two or three i don't know how long it's going to take to get to five or four or whatever but it's mm -hmm. going to happen in the next two three four five years in the meantime, I'm making cash flow day one. That cash flow increases as rent goes up. And then when I decide to take a point or two off of my mortgage, then mm -hmm. my cash flow increases dramatically. So like I'm cash flow on a day and, it, and the cash flow is going to do nothing but increase over time. <laughs> it's like now is the best time because if you find a cash flow property in today's environment, that mm -hmm. is a huge winner because yeah. it's, it's, it's like going to exponentially you know, expand, um, you know, as time goes on and then you've got appreciation, you've got mm -hmm. depreciation and I'm just like, it's paying itself off on top of the cash flow. It's just like, okay, you know, show, show me something better, yeah. you know, that I can get into. And I, I like more than half the agents don't own, don't own investment properties. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you say you want to sell forever, but that day will end. He <laughs> will, there will be a day where like me, you cringe every time a client calls and you're going to wish you had put together. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I, this is a true story. Like million dollar clients were calling me to list their properties. And I was like, damn it. Like I did not want to answer the phone. That's how bad it was. Like I was so burnt out, bro. Like 20 years of just single agent busting my ass. Um, you know, a hundred deals a year for eight years in a row, just me showing everything, bro. You got a team. This was just me. No buyer agent, no nothing. I got uh, two deals a week, every week for eight years in a row. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I, and like, I still was like, I love this. I'm never going to, you know, not do this or whatever until the day comes that you yep. look at your phone and you cringe when a client's calling, that's the day that you know that you should have been buying real properties years before. Yeah, and it's funny. Um, so I, I kind of had a little bit of, and people, you know, have various opinions on on burnout. I uh, I kind of had a little bit of a similar feeling because again, I have you know the forty agents. We have Florida going on. I was I was traveling to Florida Florida four times a week, right? Like same clothes. I would get a call and I would go to I would just fly down and come back the same day. So it started to kind of take its toll on me a little bit. I, I'm taking a day off in very, very long, like I said, mm. uh, for this weekend, but I will never tell my team to do something that I wouldn't do. So whether it be a cold call, whether it be a, a door knock an open house, any of the above. So yeah, I actually, I started doing it again, right. So like it was mm. showing the agents how, to, how it's done. Like, you know, how, this is mm. how I do it. Maybe mm. it would be different from you. And I got like seven appointments. I'm like, huh, you know, seven appointments times X commission, right? Like, I hate to say it like this, man, because of the people that are probably watching that could be kind of struggling or whatever. But, dude, this is so easy. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I hate to say it like that because it sounds like I'm like throwing it in the faces of people who are having a hard time. But they're having a hard time because they're complicating the process and they're they're over they're over communicating and they, mm -hmm. they sound nervous when they're talking and they're not really making a connection and they're not asking the questions and they're not looking at it for what it is. You know, you use the yeah. property, right? You use the property as an excuse to talk to them, to see if you mm -hmm. can make a connection, get to know them, see what you can do to help them, see what they're looking to do. It yeah. may have nothing to do with the property they own or that they're inquiring about on Zillow or whatever. Yep. And people are so focused on that property listing that expired selling that you know one they were looking at online or whatever mm -hmm. that the prospects like i'm out of here yeah and the, we, and the agent doesn't even realize what they did wrong they're like what did i do prime, prime example right <clears throat> and i think it's also too like it, it's easy but you have to surround yourself with the right people and you have to know what you should be doing so a lot of the people that i speak to across the country they almost get like uh 
like what is it like a paralysis like fear paralysis where yeah. it's like they, they know what they should do but then they're, yeah. they're scared to do it they don't, I don't know whatever what to do yeah so like prime example right is um you know going through our numbers on, on zillow and our inbound leads or leads that i've dispersed out and seeing our conversion rate i'm like hey guys we're, we're not converting these these people are coming to our open houses you did 81 open houses and you didn't convert one lead how does that make sense whereas you know the other this other agent if we look at her numbers she did six open houses and she actually sold all six houses so what what are we mm -hmm. what are we doing wrong here? Um, or Zillow, right? Same thing. You have a minute on the phone with these people. That minute is not you know a tryout to to be their agent. It's your your experience with like their experience with you. So mm -hmm. the first thing the agents were doing that I picked up on were, hey, this is so and so. Um, by the way, are you pre approved? <laughs> yeah, that's horrible. You don't even you don't even the people literally the first thing is hi. I saw you're interested in one to the main street. Are you pre approved? What's right. This? That person is in, as soon as you get off that call, they're they're out, right? Because they don't know you from a hole in the wall. They, they have no yeah. rapport with you. It's like being online at Starbucks or, or dating mm -hmm. somebody. And first thing you do is ask for their credit score. Nobody's yeah. going to, they just want an appointment, right? Yeah. Put yourself yeah. in the consumer shoes. So as soon as we kind of, you know, started implementing the KPIs and the measurables and, and seeing what was going wrong and why it was going wrong, it's easy to fix it. But when you have the fear paralysis or another example is video. So every day I make it a point to go down my, Go down to your contact list really quick on your phone. Go all the way down. Can you to do the it right now? Yeah, yeah. How many, okay. how many contacts do you have? I have 1961, almost 2,000, and I don't save anybody's number. But that's 2,000 leads right there, let's say. Yeah, 3,200. Every day, I this is what I've been doing. This is what everybody else should be doing. Same thing. I start from A, right? I'm, I'm at like E right now. Mm -hmm. Pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's going on, Ethan? Uh, just, you know, how's everything? I, yeah. I'm sorry. I know it's been a long time. I, you know, I've been super busy, but I just wanted to let you know I was thinking about you. How's everything about you? Oh, everything's good. They, maybe they bust my chops for a minute, and then they, what's the natural question? Yeah, what's going on with you? What's going on with you? How's the market? How's real estate? Yeah, they, yeah, they want to know where they want to know what's up in your world. Exactly. It's such a, it's such an easy, it's so or, easy, or even a video, right? I've been doing this thing where every day I spend about ten minutes. Um, this is a, a new habit that I've implemented. I'm being consistent with it. I spend 10 minutes to think about people that I'm thankful for. This could be a high school teacher. This could be somebody from 10 years ago. And it actually takes time to think about, right, who you want to send this to. Mm. And I'll sit there and I'll either write an email or I'll take a video. And I'll, like, I would, you know, on my face. What's up, Ricky? Uh, just wanted to let you know I was thinking about you today. And I just wanted to you know I'm, I'm super thankful for our friendship, our relationship. And you're the man. Love the new content. Keep crushing it. God bless. I'll see you soon. 10 seconds. And I'll send yeah. that to you. You'll watch that. And you're going to be like, wow, that was fuck. That was really nice. Yeah. And I, and right. And that's just the easiest way to reach out to people. I, th I think, I think the punchline is that this business is a one-on-one -on -one contact sport. Right. And that the only thing between any agent and a million bucks a year are thousands of one-on-one -on -one conversations with people in their market. Yep. Right. And it's like, OK, how long are you going to take to make to have those thousands of one on one interactions? Mm -hmm. Right. You're going to spread that out over 20 years. You're going to jam it up into a couple of years so we can get this thing over with and start making a million bucks a year. Right. Right. <clears throat> that that like I, like I'm going to get I want I want to do it now. You yeah. know, <laughs> you get fired up thinking about it. That, 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 that's why I got Ooh. into the cold calling. Because that was the only thing that I could just pound out one-on-one -on -one conversations as mm -hmm. many as I wanted at will right now today yeah. without any other like, uh, you know, it was like straight to the source instead of like doing all these activities mm -hmm. like open houses and social media and video and postcards and all this stuff to try to get try to get into conversations with people. Yep. I'm like, let me just hack the system. Let me just go back door. I'm just going to call them. <laughs> I'm just going to have, have a conversation with them right now mm -hmm. so I can go ahead and get these thousands of conversations over with so I can make this meal. Yep. It gets me like fired up because you're right. It, it is, it, it's easy, right? And maybe that's not the right word to use, but it's just, it's right there for, ev for everybody watching this, whether you've done two deals, a hundred deals, it's right there. And I'm still yeah. doing the four sub owners because it gets me so fired up when I get the, when I get the deal, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's, uh, it gives me like adrenaline. It's like, do you I feel like an agent that's not on social just won't make it? Unless you're the 30, you know, year vet that doesn't need social and you already have that book of business and all those things. 
I think they're they'll be fine. Um, but I do think they'll they'll start to get weeded out. I do think that social media is uh it's been a huge, huge, like, I cannot even tell you. The but I ROI. mean, like, it, it can enhance your business, right? Mm -hmm. But can someone build a million-dollar business from scratch no. as a new agent in today's world without it? Uh, unless, you, unless you are a master on the phone, unless you are a guru on the phone, and you have the best script, and you are the most personable, you know, human being alive, which is kind of like the fundamentals of the business, right? To say the right things the right way, mm -hmm. to build friendships and relationships and stuff like that. But I could argue that without social, I don't think that they could because let's say you went on the, a, a for sale by owner appointment or expired, right? And I did too. And you give your listing pitch and I give mine. I'm going to beat you every single, well, maybe not you, but you know, and I, somebody that doesn't have social media, let's say, mm. I'm going to beat you 10 out of 10 times because I'm going to be able to show facts and, and stats on, hey, listen, this agent, you know, these agents for sale by owners, they sell list to market price at 92% in our market. The top 3% in our market, they sell at a 102%, right, to list to market price. Mm. Our team sells 136% list to market. And it's due to the fact that we get 200 to 300,000 views on social alone. On top mm -hmm. of the fact that I, we have 40 other agents who are marketing your property too. And yeah. right then and there, you if they look you up versus, you know, versus us or the team. I, so I do think you need social. I do. Well, it's powerful, right? Like impressions, views, and you're like, this is what we do. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I had Matt on Lynetti. Yeah, um, yeah. He does the same thing. Like that's his thing, right? Is, is mm -hmm. uh, showing the views, showing the, the impressions and stuff like that in his listing yeah. presentations. And I'm like, that is some powerful stuff. I always say like if in today's world, okay, like if you go out and take the old school tactics, right? Just straight having conversations with people yep. all morning and then crush social all afternoon. You're the most dangerous, like you're, you're, you're an unstoppable force, right? I'm trying to. Sh I think I have my listing packet right here. Actually, hold on. What uh, what what are you guys? What have you, what's your guys's volume been over the past couple of years? Like, what'd you do in 21? What'd you do in 22? What are you guys on track to do this year? 21, I think we did. I want to say like 178 sides. We won the, the we won number one in units uh, in our company, and we we came in second for GCI 22. What was the volume? Uh, the volume right? for 21. Uh, I, I don't even remember. I think it was. Well, your your average price is what eight hundred? No, 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 no. Back twenty one, it was it was no way less. In twenty one, it was about five five to five fifty. I want to say. So you did about um, eighty ninety million. Yeah, and then twenty two, we did four hundred and something sides, and we bumped up our average sale price to I think it's now yeah. six fifty or six fifty five. And this yeah. year we're, we're probably I think we're pushing right now. We've done. 67 deals in florida and i think we're at the like 150 mark here my goal for this year was to get to 500 i think mm -hmm. we will fall a little bit short of that but with the new people that we brought on and the staff and everything it, next year is, is guns blazing and i knew well, going it's cool to say i'm having a down year i'm doing like 200 deals so far you know this this wow it's actually funny this is uh from last year this is my this is part of our listing presentation here uh-huh that was from, I guess, 22, but hold on. I just want to show you the social media part of this. We have, this isn't even updated, but we have our philanthropy and this is on nicer paper as well. We have our reviews. We have the entire buying process. That's the buyer packet. Damn it. Hold on. When you see this page of like the analytics and the social and all those things, it is near impossible. Let's put another buyer one. Damn it. Yeah, I guess it's well, what, what I like about it is it's not like a canned presentation. I don't even go over it. Like, I leave it. Here it is. Up. Like, I don't even go over it, right? So this yeah. one company that I started with, um, and I thank them very much for everything they showed me, but they had a listing presentation. I swear to God, it was as big as this pole right here. You can see this. And it was a, like, you had to fold it over. Like, it, it was like a weapon, right? Yeah. They would leave it, and they would, we would sit there. It was laminated and you'd have to go over it page by page and then they would take it with them. Right. I don't need to go over this page by page with you. I, I just, I leave it. I know what it says. I articulate it to the homeowner every single time. This is it. Here we go. 
when you see these numbers, and I leave this with them. Just, just take a look whenever you get a chance. I usually I don't even bring a listing packet with me. I mean, I don't even I don't even bring a um, you know, like a uh, whatever listing documents. I, and I leave every single time with it, with the listing. This is another, I guess, bad example here. Whatever. But this is an older one. And you can see, right, it has all of our impressions, and it's just easy to show. And so what's, what's happening now is our signs are everywhere every weekend, whether I have an open house or not. My, I make sure my face is on every main road here for, from Friday to Sunday. And if somebody mm -hmm. takes it and throws it out, okay, we'll buy new ones. Then they see the social media. Then they get referred by a friend. And it's just the omnipresence of all the above. So now mm -hmm. when I'm going on a listing presentation or I'm bringing a new agent or somebody, we're leaving there with a listing because they already, they already know who we are. They've already heard about yeah. us. And that's why I said social media is so important because it's just another avenue. It, it, mm -hmm. In my opinion, I'm, I'm, in my schedule, in my time block, that's prospecting. It's the same mm -hmm. thing as doing cold calls. The same thing yeah. as it's prospecting. Do you run ads or is it all organic? I, I can't run ads. Um, mm. my account got hacked in like 2018 from somebody, you know, and whatever. And, uh, I saw that dude, they changed your profile. To, yes. uh, they, they changed your profile to DJ. Was, so I can't run ads and it's like the most diabolical. Now, was that, thing. was that you that changed it to DJ? Uh, that was me. Yes. Okay. That, I was, that, that was, was just a joke. What was the deal with that? No, it wasn't a joke. That was me trying to hack. Yeah, like I was telling a joke. Like I saw uh, it got hacked. You changed the DJ for a second. What was the deal with that? Yeah, the, the truth behind that would be a DJ I, for a second. No, no, no. The, the truth behind it, I don't think I've ever told this on a podcast, but I, I don't care. It's funny. Was I was trying to get verified, so I paid a company to, ah. to, to verify me because I did kept I kept getting hacked, and I'm like, okay. listen, if I lose my account, like that's that's a big problem. I can't start over. Mm -hmm. That's why you shouldn't have all your eggs in one basket. But I paid a company <laughs> to hack me, right, and make me into a DJ. Like they actually, had, there's a song. Like I have, a, I have a song out and everything. It's a pretty good song. And I got verified, so it worked. And then like three months later, they took the, the blue badge away uh, or maybe six months later. And then now it's $10 a month. So yeah, that was a right. great investment. Why did they part. take the blue badge away? Because they realized you weren't a DJ? Uh, no, it turns out the guy that was running the, the, the scam, like right, the people, they had uh, – they, they like snitched on each other, the two partners, to try to get like the other one out. And by doing that, they basically blew up 400 people's uh, spot. Yeah. Alex Hermosi was one of those. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. listen, that's honestly got truth. But but I was getting hacked for, for a long time. So to, to answer your question, I can't boost anything. I wish. Why? Because what does getting hacked have to do with boosting? It's some... Ready, I'll show you right now. Like, yeah. like it won't let you? Like it's just like you're blocked from running ads? Why don't you do it on Facebook? I or or it's why don't same. you? It's like same. I'm just saying like you can run ads from somebody in your team's account. Look, the, the option is not even available. Uh -huh. And if I go to like, you know, payments or meta, anything, it won't let me. Boost okay. not available. So why don't you just like have like Dan O'Neill team, like somebody, uh, like somebody else start the Dan O'Neill team page. Yeah. Anyway, you don't run any ads. Bottom so line. it's working so far. So, so all of the social media stuff is all just organic and like your whole team, like it's all just organic mm -hmm. and you got, and you just preach and try to help them build like organic content, organic leads, no yeah. paid stuff. No paid stuff. And and I think that um, what I try to do with them is just share their story, right? Because if nobody, if you don't share your story, how, how are people going to know it, right? If, uh, if you didn't share that you were, you know, a roofer for, for X amount of years, I would never know that. Think about Gary Vee. Everybody knows Gary's, Gary Vee's story. He worked at his dad's, you know, wine store or whatever, sold baseball cards, Pokemon cards, whatever. But everybody knows, you know, the story. That's, that's brand, right? That, that makes people like and trust you. That's why they're going to work with you. But if you're not going to go out and, and you know sometimes brag about yourself, or if you're not going to be the go-to person for information, or you're not going to go out and you know build that brand and tell your story, because everybody has an amazing story, whether they, whether you want to share that or not. You know, I have a couple of agents on my team. One had leukemia at like 20 years old. That's a great story. Maybe you'll motivate and inspire somebody just by sharing it. Um, I had a 19, I have a 19 year old kid on my team that um, so sad. He lost his mother, his uncle, his brother. In like a week's like month span and he's still in the office every day getting putting his head down working like that's 
mm-hmm. right? You're not you're not posting that to get people to you know feel bad for you or anything, but maybe you inspire one person. Maybe you maybe you help someone going through something bad or or, yeah. or a bad time. And um, that that seems to be really working is just sharing their stories, sharing deal stories, right? Success, mm-hmm. all of the above. Mm-hmm. Um, and I people just find love that, stories, man. Yeah, because like they then they start to watch it. And if it's got a good hook, mm-hmm. you know, then it's like a, then it's like a movie. They just have to see how this thing's going to end. Like what's, how's this, you know, what's going to happen. Yep. And, and every, every, every person that's watching this, or if nobody watches this, even like, uh, your stories, right? Like I use my stories every day with intent. Everything that I post out is, is with intent. I'm not just mm-hmm. out there taking a picture or something. And everything that I'm posting is, is for a reason stories mm-hmm. or or otherwise and i try to preach that to the team too if you're afraid to get out the, like you're doing right now you were probably the first one to adapt the green screen by the way I, i'm going to give you flowers on that too um like if you're not out there with with all the the news and the articles every day that are coming out from the news and these mainstream yeah. media like you said somebody else is gonna and now mm-hmm. right your consumers your buyers they don't know and if you don't practice like how i can't even imagine how many cold calls you've made Mm-hmm. All the lessons you've learned, how many FUs you've gotten, how many times somebody slammed their fing- your, your fingers in their door. But that's all experience. That, that's, that's all helps you to get to where you are, where now you could be buying a rental property a month for the next five years. Yeah, you know what's so funny? I made 100,000 calls. I probably had like, I don't know, a dozen people cuss me out, but I, I never door knocked a single door ever. Really? Yeah. I hate door Because I was like, why? Right? I, like I grew up roofing. <laughs> where I'm like in the sun, sweating my balls off, <laughs> right? It's like, I'm not going to go outside and do anything if I can sit right here in the air conditioning and yep. just call person after person after person after person, you know? And it's like, it worked. So like, I tried different things, you know, mail outs and email. I mean, right. honestly, like there was nothing back then. There was no social media. This was 2002. There was no nothing. Yeah. Um, but when I, but when I ran up against calling and like it worked, it was like, okay, like until that didn't work, I wasn't going to try something else. Like once I find something that worked, it's like, you go all in. I think that's the biggest problem is there's so many options nowadays to lead you in and build your business. And agents are so spread out because they're scared of the business they're going to lose on this thing if they don't do it. And so they're doing like 15 things when the top producer, you never, you never hear a top producer say, I made it doing these eight things. Mm-hmm. It's always like, how, what was your, how did you do it? And it was just like, oh, I would circle prospect it, or I did Zillow leads, or I did social media. It's always like one thing. Yep. You know, and it's like, I, I was forced up to, too, just like you. I've been trying to push, like, have two main Legion activities that you're all in on, mm-hmm. and maybe a third one on the side is kind of like a secondary lead gen activity but yep. this whole like doing eight things and then through that it's like you're sacrificing the business that you may be losing on these on these other avenues but that sacrifice that sacrifice is what's gonna like help you close more deals in less time mm-hmm. going all in on these few th- i think that's a big big problem right now because back when i started there was only like three things to do <laughs> you know what i'm saying and now there's like 25 you didn't, you didn't have phones back then you were using the fucking they used the it newspaper. literally was a flip phone <laughs> like. but but you're 100 right and, and they'll they'll right there's so many different things to do so they try to do all of them right and they, they're they only giving each one of them maybe 20 percent, or they only do it for 30 days and they go ah oh, this ain't working and they stop yeah. that is yeah. you can't do that right you need to yeah. commit to three let's say three things like you said give it 90 days and give it everything right 100 yeah. percent, and maybe have some side projects but yeah. Commit to for sale by owners, commit to expireds, commit to, to circle dialing. What, what's going to work for you may be different than what's going to work for me. I've never had success mm-hmm. door knocking and I've never had success really with expireds. But mm-hmm. I, if we did a live call right now, I'd get five for sale by owners. Yeah. Easily. Right. But yeah. that's just, that's what works for me. Well, that's what's so cool. That That's why I'm very lead gen agnostic. I'm like, I'm not going to tell you just cold call or just do social or just door knock or whatever. Right. Um, number one, I'm not charging you for a program. Mm-hmm. But number two, like I've seen everything work. I've seen it all work. So it's just like figure out what works best for you on, yeah. on the expireds. It's like 
my thing, my thing is when I hear that, I'm thinking, okay, you were using, you know, like a Mike Ferry script or something, and you were going after the listing yep. and you weren't using the property as an excuse to talk to someone. You were just trying to list a property. That's why you didn't have any success. And like, for me, it's like, Hey, I see you were trying to sell this house. Whatever happened with that? Mm -hmm. And now the whole thing turns around for me being this agent salesman to a detective yeah. and they're trying to help me solve the mystery now. And they turn into my little helper. You know what I mean? <laughs> And what, what was, what's in, so I did a case study. So th this is one of my, my tactics that I use on expires and it worked, but it, it was just, it's a lot of work. I was calling for a case study. Okay. So I, Hey, I saw that you're one of 400 homes that expired in the last six months in this area. Mm -hmm. um, That's it, just what you did back in the day when it didn't work or this is what you do now. This, no, this is what is working. Okay. And I would, you know, ask them, Hey, do you mind just two seconds? Why do you think your home didn't sell? You know, we're doing a case study and okay. 90, 90%, well, actually I would say it's 50, 50. No, you know what? I wouldn't even, it was 90%. It was, it's the agent. The agent didn't communicate. The agent overpriced it. My agent okay. was horrible. Okay. All of the above. Yeah. Would you mind if as part of this case study, we send you something, just take a look at it, packet of what we do, how we do it, all of the above. You get an appointment 10 out of 10 times. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what worked for me. Right. But I've gone through every single script that you possibly could imagine. Um, well, it, 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 it's the kind of the same thing. You've turned them into your little helper, right? I'm doing a case study. I'm trying to figure out why all these listings haven't sold. Can you help me? Yes. Right. I, I need, I need a, I need a partner here. What, what do they call it in the, 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 in, in the PD? Like you're, you're, <laughs> like you're good part, like, back yeah, yeah. I, I need, like, I need, I need some backup here. Like I need, yeah. I need some help. <laughs> um, for me though, like a lot of the expires that I represented, I helped them buy something. And I never listed the property that expired because what would happen is, is I'm like, whatever happened with that? And I get into this amazing conversation and they're telling me all this stuff and I'm understanding what they want to do and under, and realizing that they don't even care if this property sells, but they're way more interested in buying this or doing that or whatever. Mm -hmm. And those, those calls, like more than half of them that I closed turned into a deal that had nothing to do with the property I'm calling about. And then, you know, like 30, 40%, like I relisted the property because that's what they wanted to do. But like most of them, more than half of them, it, it turned into a completely different deal, a commercial mm -hmm. deal on the other side of town that they're trying to sell, uh, yeah. you know, something they want to buy or whatever, you know. And that's what I find very interesting about this is that there's so many opportunities outside. And I think we're so focused, all the strategies the mainstream strategies seem to be focused on one thing, mm -hmm. trying to relist that property in some form or fashion. And yep. that's what I'm not a big fan of, right? I'm a big fan of it if that's what they're, they're trying to do. Right. But I'm more of a fan of how do I, how do I create this? How do I make friends with this person, get them to open up to me about what they really want, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And coming from a place of, uh, I guess maybe the word is like empathy. So when I'm going on appointments now, whether it be expired, for summer, whatever, even recruiting, I genuinely believe that if they don't work with us, right, that they're doing themselves a disservice. And and I'm, I'm incredibly passionate about it because I do believe that we are the best. The agents? Uh, no, this consumers, consumers oh. and agents, truly, uh -huh. uh, honestly. Um, and and I and I truly believe that, right? They're doing themselves a disservice. So I'm I'm there to help whatever whatever capacity it may be. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I've I have people that. For three years, three years, I, I would follow up or they'll call me. It's almost like buying a car. I, I feel bad for the guy that I bought my car through. When I wanted my car, I'd reach out to him. I was in a car mood, right? Then I didn't really want it anymore. So I, I would ghost him for two months. But if he didn't follow up with me, he wouldn't have been top of mind for all this time, right? And I, I can show you. I mean, he was following up. But I tell everybody, follow up until they either block you or until those messages go green. <laughs> Keep following up. So mm -hmm. six months later, I would call him, hey, I want the car again. And then I wouldn't. I, I dragged this guy through the mud for like two years and I finally transacted with him. But I have the same thing with clients or consumers of mine, right? That will follow up with me. Eh, if something happens, they they fall off. No big deal. I'm still here for you. Here's an update on the market. Here's a video of myself, whatever it may be. And if I didn't do that, right? If I wasn't following up and if I wasn't staying on top of them mm -hmm. or, or a simple objection of they're at an open house or they call on Zillow and I have an agent. They don't have an agent. You find it out in two seconds by asking the right questions. Yeah, or who's something. your agent? 
I may know him. Who's your agent? They're like, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's not a good agent. I know, I know, uh, and they're just horrible. I don't even, they, they go, oh, I forget their name. Okay, sure. What one little quick little tip here is what we've been doing. We have a packet at every open house where sign in code, you know, QR code, and then right next to it, it says in big letters, off market listings. There's nothing in the folder. It's literally bare, bare empty. As they're scanning in, they look and they go, oh, you guys have off-market list. But we ask them, do you have an agent? They go, yeah, yeah. Okay, no big deal. Just sign in. Let us know who your agent is on the QR code. Then they look to the right, which is right in front of them, and they see off-market listings. And they go, huh, you guys have off-market listings? Oh, yeah. You know, we work with three of the, the largest investors on the island. We have about 140 off-market properties. Um, and, hey, let's head to the kitchen. And they go, whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean you have? How do we get to that? Oh, well, you, you could have your agent reach out and, and we can, you know, potentially have, you know set that up, but that's really for our VIP clients only. Do you know how quickly they don't have an agent anymore <laughs> after that? <laughs> after that, it's it's like it, it, that fast. So, you know, it's it, it's implementing these little strategies, but I think the biggest thing that it comes down to is tracking. And I bet you you track everything that you do. I bet you have KPIs, I bet you you are accountable, maybe you have an account accountability buddy. Uh, but if you're not tracking these things, conversations, appointments, conversion ratio, right? If you're not tracking where your your ROI is coming from, you're just going out there with no game plan. And that's mm -hmm. what I see the most right now is agents don't know what they're doing because they don't have a game plan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're just, well, like a, it goes back to there's a million things to do. So they're just like running around. You yeah. know, like, what, you know, that's why they don't know what to do. When they come to you and say, I don't know what to do. It's because there's too many options, yeah. you know, and they're scared to put time over here because they don't know if that's going to work. You know, when there's all these other things that this is a big problem right now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm doing a talk coming up and it's going to be just strictly on guys figure out what your top two prospecting uh, avenues are. Yep. Right. And focus on those and quit doing everything else. Yeah. You know, we, we had um, somebody, uh, somebody reached out to me two weeks ago and they're like, listen, we spent, he was a newer agent with another company. He spent 10 grand in six months. He was a uh, a plumber in the city and he made very good money. He's like, I've had no luck. So I'm like, all right, let's sit down. Let's see the direct mail campaign that you've been sending and let's let's go through it. Turns out he's only sending it once. He's sending one piece of mail to a home and that's it. You know what they were probably doing? They're getting, they're getting it. Garbage. Oh, so probably. How do you spend 10 grand sending one piece of mail? Well, he would send it to let's call it ten thousand people, but he only did it one time. So everybody oh, was taking it on the first time, and they're throwing it right out. Got you, got you. Gotta you. Times three, times four. You got to send them a CMA. You have to go there in person, call them. You can't just send direct, you know, like one piece of mail and expect everyone to start calling you, mm. right? So I did like, direct mail for a long time. I was doing five thousand pieces, or I was spending five grand a month, so I was spending sixty k a month a year on yep. it. And I would do some deals. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even know if I broke even on it, to be honest. Um, but like when I'm making calls and I'm just doing deals, you know, I'm doing these postcards. I got to the point where I was just like, why am I doing postcards? Like yep. I'm trying to get them to call me. I could just call them <laughs> yeah. you know? and there again. Like I just <laughs> hacked the system. Like every time, every time I turned around, I was like, I can just call them like, oh, why don't I do this? No, I can just call them. Why don't I do that? Mm -hmm. Going back to your off market thing. I can take a bad conversation and like at like they're like, you know, being rude or whatever. And I'm like, hey, before I let you go, if if I oh, well, let me ask you this, if I had a great deal on a rental property, would you be interested in that? And you'd be surprised how many people their ears perk right up. And now they're just Mr. Nice Guy. Yeah. Right. And they're like, whoa, what you got? You know, and I'm exactly. like, well, let me get your email. Right. And like I start talking about their criteria, what they like. And now all of a sudden I got an investor client that came from somebody that was rude. When people are mean, people have to understand when when they answer the phone, they're not answering the phone. to they're hoping for this negative outcome. Right. right? They're hoping for something positive to come out of this 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 phone call. Their guards up a little bit because they don't know what you're going to throw at them. But right. they're giving you an opportunity here. You yeah. know, and the problem is you're blowing it and you think it's them because they're mean. But the yeah. fact is you suck. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you're but, but but you have to say it like that because they're like they're thinking it's the person on the phone. Oh, people are just mean and all that. No, 
they gave you an opportunity and they mm-hmm. want a positive outcome, you suck. Yep. They yep. won't they won't point their thumb. They want to point their finger. They they just can't they can't get over that, you know, it's 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 not me, it's you thing. Yeah. You know, it's like, come on, how, man. How, like, let's step up our communication game. How important like for you and, and your coaching clients and, and the team that you had and whatever, how important is it to, for you role playing? Like going over mm-hmm. scripts and, and bouncing stuff like practicing, right? Because I, you know. I, I think it I think it's good. Um, I never did it coming up. I always, always role played and practiced on my mm-hmm. prospects because nothing beats the real thing. Like reading the script, looking at it, but I didn't get good. Like I role play a little here and there. I got a little like, you know, like where I got really good was practicing on my prospects, mm-hmm. you know, and being in those real life scenarios. Right. And um, there's the like people are scared. to to mess up on a call right it's like they're not going to recognize you at walmart yes like they don't know what you look like number one right (laughs) this isn't the end of your career you know if you mess up on a call right like where you live in long island or whatever like what's the population you know two million yeah probably something like that yeah like two million people okay if you mess up on one it's okay you got a million nine hundred ninety (laughs) nine other people to call that yep. you can get better every single call and get a little better, a little better, a little better. I agree. So, um, I don't know. I never was big on it, to be honest with you. I, I never was either, and I did the same thing. I just trial by fire. But what I'm finding for the for the newer agents or the people that are struggling right now is they don't know. They don't even know what to say or how to yeah. say it or how to communicate. So when yeah. somebody says or asks a question about inventory or the market, you know, where wherever it may stand or appreciation. Mm-hmm. Having those stats and facts right at the top of your head, like I did earlier on yeah. this, on this, right? But you speak with confidence because I know yeah. it. And then they're like, wow, yeah. you really you know a lot about the market. So if you don't role play and you don't really know what to say, yeah. you're going to call those 2 million people and they're going to click. I think there's two things to think about that. Uh, well, you can never call 2, two million people. That, that's <laughs> the punchline, right? But there's two things to think about, right? Because w- when you talk about role playing, a lot of people will role play instead of making calls yeah. and they'll chalk it up to, Oh, I'm getting better. And, and like, my thing is, is okay. You want to role play for like five minutes, go for it, yeah. but get on the phone. Cause none of the role play matters unless you're talking to people. Yep. The next thing is, is knowing the stats and everything too many people sit around and try to learn every little stat before they make calls or talk to people or whatever. And the, the, the 10 stats that they didn't look at are the 10 questions they're going to get from people. Yes. Every time. And so I got to where I didn't, I didn't try to figure anything. I didn't try to learn any stats. I didn't know any stats. Like I know stats now. Cause it, cause this is my job is to analyze the market and bring information. Right. And I think real estate agents need to be more like that than I was. Mm-hmm. So don't like watch what I used to do when I was coming up, you know, yeah. watch kind of what I do now and be more right. of like an analyst and really try to provide information. But at the same time, don't use it as a crutch you know, to not reach out to people because they're all one thing you got to get really good at when it comes to like role playing and thinking about making calls and stuff is how are we going to handle questions that we don't have the information or we, or we haven't heard that question before, how we're going to handle the, the ones that kind of throw us off a little bit, how you handle those questions is really going to define the relationship, especially if it's in the first conversation with the prospect, you know, like how well are you to be able to kind of think on your feet and transition the the conversation where you don't sound like a complete you know yeah right. doofus right <laughs> yeah. So. We, we, we do it uh we do it every wednesday we do it for just 30 minutes and what it does mm-hmm. is i find that it fires everybody up to make the calls oh and we do yeah. it at a time where most people aren't answering the phone anyway because they're probably at work or they're out and we we have everybody bring you know three objections that they found from the previous week and we go through them and i and it's been super helpful i love the role-playing sessions that i do because i literally just scream at people <laughs> make your calls I just, call everybody i mean I, I don't say make your calls but like i'm like like and when they're doing i'm like you know critiquing them and stuff i'm just screaming at everybody for like 30 minutes or so and it fires everybody up and i'm yeah. fired up afterwards you yeah. know um bro it's labor day man i i gotta roll we gotta go to my wife's grandfather's and do some dinner and all that it's good talking to you probably chatted up for hours and hours. I know. Um, the man. 
what uh what and the answer you go back to like what i'm focusing on before we dip i'm just continuing to build a brand you know take the income from the businesses there and just buy properties man that's like my main thing i thought about syndicating and i'm still kind of there but i'm like i just buy the properties on my own it's kind of almost like build a team versus single agent so it's like yeah. syndicate versus you syndicate you own 10 percent of a thousand units why well, could just go buy 100 units on my own you know what I mean? And not have to report to the investors and do all this stuff. Not to say I'll never do anything like that. I'm just, uh, I enjoy what I'm doing. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, I got the coaching money coming in. I got the brokerage money. I got the investments. I'm still making money on commissions. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to step up with like doing better, like bringing on better names like yourself to the podcast and like trying to do some real, bring some real, um, just different, you know, yeah. perspectives. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Are, are so, you still, are, are you and Juan still doing the like road to a thousand agents? Are you guys still trying to bring on people and mentor them and do all that stuff? Yeah. So like with the brokerage side, when the market shifted, all the new agents left the business. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I spent countless hours with new agents and I was okay. like, okay, not a good ROI. Uh, um, and so I'm just focused on higher producers, you know, if, you know, as long as you're doing a couple mil a year, you know, yeah. 10 mil is a good number. I want to take those like, you know, five, 10 mil agents that want to go to 30 mil. And yeah. like, cause that, there, it's so much easier to take an agent from five mil to 30 mil than from zero to five mil. Yeah. Right. Way or easier. You how to write a sales agreement. You want to be teaching them how to go out there and get that listing appointment. Exactly. From expired and yeah. Well, it's like, okay, how to write contracts on one side. And then the other side is, okay, how do we be more efficient? You've proven that you can do this and you know, you know how the, how the, the game works. Now, yeah. how do we take what you're doing and make a few tweaks and triple your business? Correct. And that yeah. those are a lot easier conversions. And then I've still got the free coaching, you know, for all the new agents and stuff. And we're still reducing the failure rate and doing all those great things in the industry and stuff and traveling and speaking and doing all that stuff. But I'm having fun. I knock off at five every day. I'm off on the weekends, you know, just chilling. We went to Disney for a week, two weeks ago. And it's like all the money I have coming in from all my income sources come in, whether I'm here or not now. That's sick. like, I don't have to be there. Yeah. And that was really the first time I took a vacation where money rolled in no matter what. And it was like, okay, this is, this is how it's supposed to be. How and, and last question because I know we got to roll. How long have you been doing this for? The content, the coaching, and stuff like that. No, no, no. Just how long have you had your real estate license for? I got in in 02. So you've been, uh, what, 21 uh, years. 21 years. Yeah. 21 years. Now you are finally at a point in your life where you can go to Disney with the kids and you don't have, you could clock out at five, you could have the weekends off, but mm -hmm. 21 years of 15 hour days, of making yeah. those calls, of doing all well, of the above. 21 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I see that. Right. And, and, and the second that I feel a little bit burnt out or a little bit tired or whatever it may be, I'm on year four and a half. Yeah. I got, I got a long way to go. Yeah. And I am excited because there is so much opportunity in this business and in investing and all of the above uh -huh. to make as you can make, you are making as we're making as much money as pro athletes. Yeah. As surgeons, as doctors, yeah. I barely yeah. graduated high school. I only went to college for baseball and I got kicked off the team in a year mm -hmm. and we're making money like that. But yeah. it's everything that you put into it. And I dropped out of college and I'm literally <laughs> going to be a billionaire. <laughs> I dream, but that, that's got to be the intro. It's fucking awesome. Sorry. <laughs> um, but I, I just want to say, uh, you know, man, I love when, I, when we get to talk like this. Uh, I appreciate you having me on. And uh, I love the content, dude. Keep it up. Really. It's appreciate it's, that, man. Appreciate the, that. The only video time. that I stop and watch, truthfully, at right now, <laughs> maybe some, some the BAM stuff and, and, you know, and Eric or whatever, but like, <laughs> I watch everything that you're doing and just know you got a fan and a friend in me and I appreciate you having me on. Oh, dude, I appreciate you saying that. And likewise to you, you want me to tag your Instagram below or where do you want people to follow you? Uh, they, wherever. I'll put it in the comments or something. It's no big deal. Dan O'Neill. <laughs> Dan O'Neill. <laughs> <Dan O'Neal. laughs> do I, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> you're <laughs> like, I hate Instagram. <laughs> it sucks. Yeah. Don't follow me there. <laughs> Everybody leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to build a team, but please don't reach out to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, man. I appreciate you very much. All right, bro. Later, we'll see brother. you, man. I'll talk to you soon. Be good. Thanks, bro.